It's 9 o'clock, and you're with Observer Radio News. Good morning, I'm Francois Bieber. It's 9 o'clock and sunny and 7 degrees outside our East York studios. Here are the headlines. Another Amber Alert early this morning finds a missing child. GM re- revamps plants in North America. Boobquake shakes the world. A wild night in sports. And William Shatner, the original Captain Kirk, is back. Now to our top story. An Amber Alert was issued early this morning for a missing 10-year-old Sudbury boy. The boy was found in a home in Newmarket by police around 4 o'clock this morning. The boy's mother told police she got into an argument with her husband yesterday afternoon. That's when the man took off with his son, which prompted the Amber Alert. Police said officers spotted the father's car traveling eastbound on Highway 9 at the 400. 41-year-old Robert Whalen is being held by police and faces charges of criminal harassment, mischief, and dangerous driving. The Titan automaker, General Motors, will announce later today its plans to revamp its North American plants. GM is planning on investing close to $900 million to upgrade five plants, including a $235 million investment for an engine plant in St. Catharines, but not one in Oshawa. The announcement comes less than a week after the automaker paid back the U.S. and Canadian government loans five years ahead of schedule. Women around the world busted out of their favorite cleavage-bearing tops yesterday as thousands came together for boob quake. On April 16th, an Islamic cleric blamed women's scandalous clothing for distracting men and causing natural disasters around the world. In response, blogger Jen McCrate created a Facebook group urging women to wear their low-cut tops in protest. With more than 80,000 joining the Facebook group, boob quake was in full force yesterday. The Student Union at University of Toronto Scarborough is encouraging the student body to say yes to a world-class athletics facility. The school beat out Markham last year in a bid to host the 2015 Pan Am Games. Since then, some student groups have lobbied against paying for the facility themselves. Many students that would be funding the construction would be, will be graduated well before the facility is complete. Axe lost a wild one last night at the Rogers Centre. Squaring off with the Red Sox, both teams combined for 25 runs, the most scored in a game in the 2010 season, with the Jays on the losing end 13-12. The game went a season-long 4 hours and 33 minutes and saw a dozen pitchers from both sides. The loss is the Jays' third in a row, dropping their record to 10-10. Both teams face off again tonight at the Rogers Centre, 7 o'clock start. Twas a night of Game 6s in the NHL last night, as Nashville, Buffalo, and Montreal all tried to force a Game 7. The Canadians beat the Caps 4-1. Yaroslav Halak was the top performer, making 53 saves for the win. The Boston Bruins knocked off the Sabres, 4-3 victory there, while Chicago ousted the Predators 5-3 to propel them to the second round. You can catch Phoenix and Detroit play the deciding seventh game in their series tonight at 10 o'clock. And in entertainment news, where the Vulcans excelled in intelligence, humans excel in fandomonium. Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry is auctioning off his personal stash of Trek memorabilia, with the proceeds going to the Roddenberry Foundation, which helps support children's education and the environment. The original Captain Kirk, William Shatner, is putting up his custom Harley-Davidson motorcycle and his Walk of Fame plaque, which he was honored with in 1983. Shatner just sold his kidney stone for 75 grand, which he donated to Habitat for Humanity. And that's all for Observer Radio News. For more news, check out our website at torontoobserver.ca. I'm Francois Bieber. Live long and prosper.